Chapter 4. The Law of Propagation. There is a law irrevocably decreed in heaven before the foundations of this world, upon which all blessings are predicated and when we obtain any blessing from God, it is by obedience to that law upon which it is predicated. D and C 130 20-21. The laws of mathematics, science, and of propagation are eternal in their nature. Shortcuts by disobedience cannot produce similar results in these or in any of the works of God. But it is hard to get the people to believe that God is a scientific character, that he lives by science or strict law, that by this he is, and by law he was made what he is, and will remain to all eternity, because of his faithful adherence to law. It is a most difficult thing to make the people believe that dot 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 he is their author. Our spirits are his, he begot them. We are his children, he set the machine in motion to produce our tabernacles. Brigham Young, J.D. 13306. The law of propagation is not an exception, and all living things must come forth by the law of reproduction through the seed of its own type and kind. Plants, insects, fowls, animals, and man must reproduce their own species through obedience to this eternal and unchangeable law. Paul the Apostle said, And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain seed, it may chance of wheat or of some other grain, but God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. I Cor, 1537-39. Species cannot be changed by interbreeding, except by creating a mutation freak or hybrid. The prophet Joseph Smith agreed with this when he stated, God has set many signs on the earth, as well as in the heavens, for instance, the oak of the forest, the fruit of the tree, the herb of the field, all bear a sign that seed hath been planted there, for it is a decree of the Lord, that every tree, plant, and herb bearing seed, should bring forth of its kind, and cannot come forth after any other law or principle. TPJS, page 198. The footnote on this same page by Joseph Fielding Smith reads, This very positive statement by the prophet, that every tree, plant, and herb, and evidently every other creature, cannot produce except after its kind, is in harmony not only with the scriptures, but also with all known facts in the world. TPJS, page 198. In his famous speech of 1852, Brigham Young also concurs that the origin of all vegetation upon the earth was by seed. They, Adam and Eve, came here, organized the raw material and arranged in their order the herbs of the field, the trees, the apple, the peach, the plum, the pear, and every other fruit that is desirable and good for man. The seed was brought from another sphere and planted in this earth. J.D. 150. Brigham Young's counselor, Heber C. Kimball, also agreed with this when he said, Did you find the seed? No, you did not. The Lord found it. When he came here he brought it with him, and he told his sons to sow it, and let it increase. J.D. 2 160. After the earth was made, then there was a garden spot selected, and the Lord commanded some of his associates to go and plant it, and to cause all kinds of vegetation to grow, and fruits of every description. Some suppose the Lord commanded all these things to come out of the earth. Yes, he did, after the seeds were put in the earth, and he blessed the earth and the vegetation that was in the earth. When all these things were done, the garden was beautified, and made pure and clean and holy and sanctified, and then the next thing was to bring forth the animal creation, but the animals were not brought there until the vegetation was planted and grown. We often sing, This earth was once a garden place where God our Father dwelt, and took possession in a stand that mankind will take who attain to that honor. The religion of Jesus Christ, of angels, of Brigham, and of all good men, is to take care of and improve and adorn the earth as Adam did. When he planted the garden, he planted it with seeds he brought with him, and he also brought the animals from the earth he lived upon, where his father dwelt. J.D. 8243. Did God produce us? He did, and every son and daughter of Adam upon this earth, and he produced us upon the same principle that we produce one another. And so it is with the fruit of creation. J.D. 6101. President Brigham Young was positive of this, and he emphasized this law, so that no one would mistake his meaning or intent. God has made his children like himself to stand erect, and has endowed them with intelligence and power and dominion over all his works, and given them the same attributes which he himself possesses. He created man, as we create our children, for there is no other process of creation in heaven, on the earth, in the earth, or under the earth, or in all the eternities, that is, that were, or ever will be. J.D. 11 122. 
the prophet Joseph Smith expounded this principle, also establishing man's eternal conformity to his law of propagation. If Abraham reasoned thus if Jesus Christ was the Son of God, and John discovered that God the Father of Jesus Christ had a father, you may suppose that he had a father also. Where was there ever a son without a father? And where was there ever a father without first being a son? Whenever did a tree or anything spring into existence without a progenitor? And everything comes in this way. TPJS, page 373. Hugh Nibley through his research and reasoning came to the same conclusion. Dot 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 we find throughout the cosmos an infinity of dwelling places, topoi, either occupied or awaiting tenants. These are colonized by migrants from previously established toposes or worlds, all going back ultimately to a single original center. The colonizing process is called planting, and those spirits which bring their treasures to a new world are called plants, more rarely seeds, of their father or planter in another world. Every planting goes out from a treasure house, either as the essential material elements or as the colonizers themselves, who come from a sort of mustering area called the treasure house, either as the essential material elements, or as the colonizers themselves, who come from a sort of mustering area called the treasure house of the souls. With its planting completed, a new world is in business, a new treasury has been established from which new sparks may go forth in all directions, to start the process anew in ever new spaces. God wants every man to plant a planting nay. He has promised that those who keep his law may also become creators of worlds. But keeping that law requires following the divine pattern in every point, in taking the treasure to a new world. The sent one, who follows hard on the heels of the colonists, seeks nothing so much as complete identity with the one who sent him. Hence, from first to last, one mind alone dominates the whole boundless complex. Because each planting is completely dependent on its treasure house or home base, the system never breaks up into independent systems. In this patriarchal order, all remains forever identified with the Father, from whom all ultimately come forth. Nibley on the Timely and the Timeless, Hugh Nibley, page 60. This principle strikes at the foundation of the brick creation philosophy of Adam. The modern concept of religious thinking is willing to give Jesus a mother but not a literal father, and under the same peculiar quirk, they contribute a father to Adam, but not a mother. This famous sermon of President Brigham Young clearly announced that Adam had a mother, and Jesus had a father. He was striking a preponderant blow at the traditions, superstitions, and hallowed famous tales of philosophizing on the subject of Adam's beginning. Brother Kimball quoted a saying of Joseph the prophet, that he would not worship a god who had not a father, and I do not know that he would if he had not a mother, the one would be as absurd as the other. Brigham Young, JD 9286. We have learned that God is our father, and that we are his children, bonafide as children. Not in a spiritual sense alone, but when we say, our father who art in heaven, we mean just what we say. Daniel H. Wells, JD 16 127. Thus you may continue and trace the human family back to Adam and Eve, and ask, are we of the same species with Adam and Eve? Yes, every person acknowledges this. This comes within the scope of our understanding. But when we arrive at that point, a veil is dropped, and our knowledge is cut off. Were it not so, you could trace back your history to the father of our spirits in the eternal world. He is a being of the same species as ourselves, he lives as we do except the difference that we are earthly, and he is heavenly. He had been earthly, and is of precisely the same species of being that we are. Brigham Young, J.D. 4217. Heber C. Kimball declared the work of governing and propagation, were both essential to begin the work of organizing this world. Every man that comes into this world is an independent being, upon the same principle that our Father and our God is independent, only he is independent to a greater degree, being further advanced in perfection. He came here, and helped to organize this earth, and having had an experience in organizing earths before he came here, he was capable, and had every principle necessary to create this earth and fill it with inhabitants. If there had not been a seed of government in him, and all those powers and faculties necessary to propagate the human species, he never could have done that work. We are his sons and daughters. H. C. Kimball, J. D. 4334. 1. H. Roberts said that man is also subject to this invariable reproduction law that applies to all of nature's species. The great law of nature is that every plant, herb, fish, fowl, beast and man produces his kind, though there may be slight variations from that law. Those variations soon run out, either by reverting to the original stock, 
or else by becoming incapable of producing offspring, and thus become extinct. Man's relationship to deity contributor 10266, and from President John Taylor. The animal and vegetable creations are governed by certain laws, and are compassed of certain elements peculiar to themselves. This applies to man, to beasts, fowls, fish, and creeping things, to the insects and to all animated nature, each one possessing its own distinct features, each requiring a specific sustenance, each having an organism and faculties governed by prescribed laws to perpetuate its own kind. Mediation and Atonement, page 154. It was upon this basis that Brigham Young took such a bold stand against the philosophy of Adam's formation from the dust of the ground, and he retorted, You believe Adam was made of the dust of this earth? This I do not believe, though it is supposed that it is so written in the Bible but it is not to my understanding. You can write that information to the stakes, if you please that I have publicly declared that I do not believe that portion of the Bible as the Christian world do. I never did, and I never want to. What is the reason I do not? Because I have come to understanding, and banished from my mind all the baby stories my mother taught me when I was a child. JD26. To him, this is one of the baby stories, similar to the stork baby stories that we hear today. He explained the law of propagation as applicable to the origin of Adam. Adam was made from the dust of an earth, but not from the dust of this earth. He was made as you and I are made, and no person was ever made upon any other principle. JD 3319. Four years later he emphatically continued to emphasize this realm of thought. And here let me state to all philosophers of every class upon the earth, when you tell me that Father Adam was made as we make adobes from the earth, you tell me what I deem an idle tale. When you tell me that the beasts of the field were produced in that manner, you are speaking idle words devoid of meaning. There is no such thing in all the eternities where the gods dwell. Mankind are here because they are the offspring of parents who were first brought here from another planet, and power was given them to propagate their species, and they were commanded to multiply and replenish the earth. Brigham Young, J.D. 7285. The apostles and prophets, when speaking of our relationship to God, say that we are flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. Dot 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 Brigham Young, J.D. 11262. And again, we have heard a great deal about Adam and Eve, how they were formed, etc. Some think that he was made like an adobe, and the Lord breathed into him the breath of life, for we read, From dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Well, he was made from the dust of the earth, but not of this earth. He was made just the same way you and I are made, but on another earth. Brigham Young, L. John Nuttall Journal, 118. 1. H. Roberts referred to this procreation law of Adam's creation on another world. We are informed that the Lord God made every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb before it grew on our planet. As vegetation was created or made to grow upon some older earth, so likewise man and his helpmate were brought from some other world to our own, to people it with their children. And though it is said that the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground it, by no means follows that he was formed as one might form a brick, or from the dust of this earth. We are all formed of the dust of the ground, though, instead of being molded as a brick, we are brought forth by the natural laws of procreation. So also was Adam and his wife in some other world. And as for the story of the rib under it, I believe the mystery of procreation is hidden. Contributor 10265. Other authorities have also taught the eternal law of procreation. We believe that we are the literal descendants of our eternal father, that we are the offspring of deity, that those aspirations which man has, and which cause him to perform the mighty works that we see on every hand as we travel throughout the earth, are inherited from our eternal father. They come to us by descent, or, to use another phrase, they are hereditary. The doctrine of heredity is manifested in the works of man. We descend from this great father who formed the earth and who governs this universe. George Q. Cannon, Day. Weekly News, 38675. We believe that we are the literal offspring of deity. We have descended from the great being who formed this earth and from him. We have inherited the glorious aspirations to be like unto him. Dot 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 we believe in a God of revelation who will give more and more light to us till we can become like him. We worship the being who has revealed himself to us. It was necessary at the outset of this work to have a revelation from him. There were many erroneous ideas about God, and the first revelation to Joseph Smith was the appearance of the Father and the Son. I have heard that there are some among us who say that both are one person. This is a fallacy. There are two personages, the Father and the Son. God is the being who walked in the Garden of Eden and who talked with the prophets. This revelation came to us in certainty. George Q. Cannon, Mill, Star 51278. They were also instructed to plant every kind of vegetable, 
likewise the forest and the fruit trees, and they actually brought from heaven every variety of fruit, the seeds of flowers, and planted them in this earth on which we dwell. And I will say more, the spot chosen for the Garden of Eden was Jackson County, in the state of Missouri, where independence now stands. It was occupied in the morn of creation by Adam and his associates, who came with him for the express purpose of peopling this earth. Father Adam was instructed to multiply and replenish the earth to make it beautiful. Dot dot dot. I might say much more upon the subject, but I will ask, has it not been imitated before you and your holy endowments? so that you might understand how things were in the beginning of creation and cultivation of this earth. God the Father made Adam the Lord of this creation in the beginning, and if we are the lords of this creation under Adam, ought we not to take a course to imitate our Father in heaven? Dot dot dot. The prophet Joseph frequently spoke of these things in the revelations which he gave, but the people generally did not understand them, but to those who did they were cheering. They had a tendency to gladden the heart and enlighten the mind. H. C. Kimball, J. D. 10235, again, from another early publication, was written. Adam was not made out of a lump of clay, as we make a brick, nor was Eve taken as a rib bone from his side. They came by generation. Women of Mormondom, Tullage, page 179. Perhaps the most logical, philosophically sound, and reasonable aspect of this doctrine is penned by the third president of the church, John Taylor. Dot dot dot, and if we take man, he is said to have been made in the image of God, and being his son, he is, of course, his offspring, an emanation from God, in whose likeness we are told he is made. He did not originate from a chaotic mass of matter, moving or inert, but came forth possessing, in an embryotic state, all the faculties and powers of a God. And when he shall be perfected, and have progressed to maturity, he will be like his father a God, being indeed his offspring. As the horse, the ox, the sheep and every living creature, including man, propagates its own species and perpetuates its own kind, so does God perpetuate his. Contributor 10267. If such a brick man had actually been created in the literal sense of an adobe, President Young explain what would have been the result. Look for instance at Adam. Listen, ye Latter-day Saints, supposing that Adam was formed actually out of clay, out of the same kind of material from which bricks are formed, that with this matter. God made the pattern of a man, and breathed into it the breath of life, and left it there, in that state of supposed perfection he would have been an adobe to this day. J.D. 26. Hence, the adobe man, rib woman's story was a symbolical interpretation to the law of procreation. It was a story written by Moses for the children of Israel. They could not understand the context of the true doctrine of the subject, nor grasp the full enormity of the creation story, much like most ecclesiastics today. Therefore, Moses wrote it in this symbolical manner. Apostle Parley P. Pratt ridiculed such a literal translation of Genesis. Man molded from the earth as a brick. Woman, manufactured from a rib. Thus parents still would fain conceal from budding manhood the mysteries of procreation, or the sources of life's ever-flowing river, by relating some childish tale of newborn life, engendered in the hollow trunk of some old tree, or springing with spontaneous growth like mushrooms from out of the heaps of rubbish. O oh man, when wilt thou cease to be a child of knowledge? Key to Theology, page 56. And behind the biblical story of the creation of man is also found the spiritual creation. For I, the Lord God, created all things, of which I have spoken, spiritually, before they were naturally upon the face of the earth. Moses 3 5. The scriptures abound with the doctrine of the pre-existence. It is believed by the greater portion of the earth's inhabitants, because it is so reasonable. However, pre-existence does not explain the origin of Adam's body, because pre-existence implies spiritual creation. When Adam was in the Garden of Eden, he had a physical body and we ask of what kind? From the learned Orson Pratt came this description. Dot 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 and you will fall asleep in peace having made sure your salvation, and having done your duty well, like those whose funeral sermon we are preaching this morning, and thus you will fall asleep, with a full assurance that you will come up in the morning of the first resurrection, with an immortal body, like that which Adam had before he partook of the forbidden fruit. This is the promise to them that fall asleep in Jesus. Masterful Discourses, page 346. Now then, if their bodies were immortal and like those that come up in the morning of the first resurrection, it indicates that Adam must have previously had a resurrection. In 1967-68 the elders of the church were taught in their priesthood lesson that Adam and Eve, as immortal beings, were placed on earth and commanded to multiply and fill the earth with posterity. A Light Unto the World Bruce R. McConkie, page 4. On a subsequent page of this manual, the definition of an immortal being is described as one who dwells in a resurrected state. 
Accordingly, eternal life is not a name that has reference only to the unending duration of a future life. Immortality is to live forever in the resurrected state, and by the grace of God, all men will gain this unending continuance of life. Ibid. Page 6. Hence, Adam and Eve, as immortal beings, were placed in the Garden of Eden in a resurrected state. This is also substantiated by Samuel Richards. Adam and Eve were made of the dust of the earth from which they came they brought their bodies with them. They had lived and died and been resurrected before they came here and they came with immortal bodies, and had to partake of the fruit of this earth in order to bring forth mortal bodies, or natural bodies, that their seed might be of the dust of this earth as they were from the dust of the earth from which they came. Journal I, Book 2, pages 63-64. to And from Brigham Young, things were first created spiritually, the Father actually begot the spirits, and they were brought forth and lived with him. Then he commenced the work of creating earthly tabernacles, precisely as he had been created in the flesh himself by partaking of the coarse material that was organized and compassed this earth until his system was charged with it. Consequently, the tabernacles of his children were organized from the coarse materials of this earth. JD for 218. Here then is the story of the fall. It is the doctrine of stepping from immortality into mortality. This would be the decline or the transgression of Adam, as it is called. Continuing with this interpretation, the apostle Orson Pratt said, And what was the fullest extent of the penalty of Adam's transgression? I will tell you. It was death. The death of what? The death of the immortal tabernacle of that tabernacle where the seeds of death had not been. That was wisely framed, and pronounced very good. The seeds of death were introduced into it. How, and in what manner? Some say there was something in the nature of the fruit that introduced mortality. Masterful Discourses, page 336. And again, the father and mother were at length in their garden of Eden. They came on purpose to fall. They fell that man might be that he might have joy. They ate of the tree of mortal life, partook of the elements of this earth, that they might again become mortal for their childrino's sake. They fell that another world might have a probation, redemption and resurrection. Women of Mormondom, Tullage, page 179. Adam and Eve are the names of the fathers and mothers of worlds. Dot 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 perchance the scientist might hesitate to accept the Mormon ideals of the genesis of mortals and immortals, but Joseph and Brigham have very much improved on the mosaic genesis of man. It is certainly not scientific to make Adam as a model adobe, the race has come by generation. The genesis of a hundred worlds of his family, since his day, does not suggest brickyards of mortality. The patriarchal economy of Mormonism is at least an improvement, and is decidedly epic in all its constructions and ideals. A grand patriarchal line. Then, down from the eternities generations of worlds and generations of gods. All one universal family. Women of Mormondom, pages 180 to 81. This is consistent with reason, and it opens depth to the scriptures. We were taught by the Savior to pray to our Father who is in heaven, and thereby recognize the actuality of such a relationship. In 1910, the church published an article on man's beginning which literally teaches such to be the doctrine we believe. Man has descended from God. In fact, he is of the same race as the gods. His descent has not been from a lower form of life. In other words, man is, in the most literal sense, a child of God. This is not only true of the spirit of man, but of his body also. Priesthood Course of Study, 1910, Subject, The Creation of Man. Thus the doctrine advocated by Brigham Young exalts man's relationship with God. Man has his roots in the creation he is the spiritual and physical child of God. No other doctrine has ever brought the relationship between man and God any closer. No other doctrine ever revealed the condescension of God for his children in a more beautiful and loving manner than through the fall of Adam. This doctrine combines all the long-suffering and love of an eternal father who was willing to endure the pain and sorrow of mortality, to introduce the plan of salvation to all of his sons and daughters. Through birth in spirit and body, men became the sons of God by generation.